Hello, I'm Nathalie Farpour Lambert from Geneva University Hospital. I'm a specialist in pediatrics and obesity, and I'm the president elect of EASO. I'm going to talk about the prevalence of obesity and its comorbidities, the causes of obesity, as well as the management of childhood obesity. Obesity is a multifactorial disease. I'm going now to present the evidence on the causes of obesity. First of all, we know that physical activity is reduced in modern, in our modern societies. Humans used to be very active a few millions of years ago, being chasing and picking fruits. Now, however, the situation has changed very quickly in the past decades, and more and more people are working in front of screen and children are spending very often more than four hours in front of the screen. We know that the reduction of physical activity leads to a reduction of energy expenditure and is one of the contributing factors to obesity. A few decades ago, children used to go to school by foot or by bike, but now less and less children use this way of transportation and we know that there is an association with the time spent in a car and obesity. The young generation is a screen generation, a computer and mobile phone and more and more young children as well as babies know how to use a tablet. We know that there is an association between uh, childhood obesity and the time spent in front of the screen. However, we are still lacking some evidence in very young children. Sleeping time has been now uh, discovered as a new contributing factor to childhood obesity. And we know now that the lack of sleep usually due also to uh, uh, an increased time span in front of the screen in the evening is associated with childhood obesity. So therefore, increasing the, the time of sleeping and is an important uh, thing to remember in preventing childhood obesity. Nutritional habits have changed dramatically in the past decades. The food industry is now producing more products including added, added sugar, saturated fat, as well as salt. The sugar sweetened beverages production is also increasing and more and more children are drinking them instead of drinking water. One of the solutions to prevent childhood obesity is to improve the content of the products, improve the, the labeling as well as reducing the promotion of unhealthy food to young children. The question has been raised about the potential addiction of sugar in very young children. Now we know that 80% of the processed food sold to the population contained added sugar, even tomato sauce, pasta, pizza, and many other products which are not supposed to contain added sugar. Some studies in animals have shown that an addiction to sugar may develop in very young animals and may be even stronger than an addiction to cocaine. When we talk about obesity, it might be seen as a positive aspect. In many populations, like South American, African or Asian population, obesity is often seen as a sign of good health as well as wealth. So we have to take these factors into account when treating people with obesity as well as in our prevention intervention. Obesity is unfortunately associated with socioeconomic factors. We know that obesity, the risk of obesity may double or triple in children born in families with a low socioeconomic status. So the education of the parents is an important factor uh, contributing to uh, nutrition, physical activity, as well as health. Um, population with a low socioeconomic status uh, have a limited access to healthy food. They, ha they are sensitive to food promotion. They usually have a reduced physical activity level 
and a lack of opportunity for physical activity. It's very often too expensive, they do not get the right information about the sports activities. The transport to the activity might be a problem, as well as the work of the parents and the, the global environment. As you have seen, obesity is due to multiple factors and is very complex. It's not only a question of having enough physical activity and reducing the food intake or improving the quality of the food intake. But we all know now that many organs are also playing an important role in the development of obesity. The adipose tissue is in communication with the brain as well as the gut, the liver, pancreas, and we also know that genetic factors are contributing to the de development of the disease. Not everybody is developing an obesity, and some families are more at risk than others. Medication can also play a role in both the development or the treatment of obesity. Obesity during pregnancy is an important factor contributing to health problems both in mothers and newborns. We know now that maternal obesity or an excessive weight gain during pregnancy is associated with an increased risk of childhood obesity as well as an increased risk of chronic disease such as type 2 diabetes or cardiovascular disease. Ob maternal obesity is often associated with gestational di diabetes which increase further this risk. Obese mother may also give birth to children with a low birth weight or large birth weight. And rec more recently, we know that tobacco used during pregnancy also increase the risk of childhood obesity. So we know that the, the in utero milieu may influence the metabolic programming of the fetus and then have an influence later in life on the premature development of chronic disease. We know that the risk of gestational diabetes is increasing positively with the increase of body mass index. For example, in women with being in the overweight category, so with a BMI over 25, the risk of gestational diabetes is, is multiplied by two. In women with a BMI over 35, this risk is increased by six. A recent Norwegian study has shown that maternal obesity increases also the mortality and the risk of cardiovascular disease later in life. And in this study, they followed a cohort of newborn up to 70, 70 years. Mm -hmm. Authors have found an association with maternal obesity and decreased life expectancy. 35% of the person uh, being born of an obese mother have a, a, a reduced life expectancy. More recently, the Dorian European project has investigating the relationship between maternal obesity and changes in both the hormonal milieu and the intrauterine milieu as well as the influence on genetic factors. This study has shown an increased level of cortisol and stress in mothers with obesity and having a direct influence on the stress of the fetus and then the newborn. Um, in this study, they also found an increased level of insulin as well as an increased oxidative stress as a result. Finally, the Dorian project shown epigenetic changes which may influence the transcription of proteins. So we know now that maternal obesity is associated with the programming of uh, chronic disease and we know that some epigenetic changes happening during pregnancy may affect the life of the children, but also may affect aging in later in life. There is an increased prevalence of maternal obesity in Europe. To date, one in five 
pregnant women are obese and we are expecting that this number will go up to 37% in 2020. So we know now that maternal obesity is associated with increased health risk for the mothers, increased risk for developing chronic disease in the children born of mothers with obesity and so there is an urgent need to develop intervention strategies to prevent both childhood obesity and non-communicable disease. It goes from generation to generation like a snowball effect. We know now that genetics factor, biological, physical activity, nutrition, psychosocial factors influence overweight and obesity in the population. We know also that overweight and obesity influence the mother health, but also the child health. And at its at his go through the lifespan, it's important to develop intervention at each level, both to prevent obesity or to improve the management of obesity, to prevent obesity in the next generation. There are different levels of intervention. We can try to change behaviors, individual behaviors, but we all know that it's very difficult to change in an obesogenic environment. The promotion of high density food, promotion of sugar sweetened beverages, as well as reduced physical activity due to increased transportation, make changes difficult. So we should not ask the people to change without changing their environment. There is a need for political decisions, changes in regulation to improve the well-being and the environment of the population.